Holy Spirit. Give me the book of Psalms 27 and verse 13. 13. Thank you. You can find me the amplified version and the message version. So he says, I had fainted. There are many versions to this, so that's why I want to look at the others. But I need you to focus on me a little bit. He said, I had fainted. I was almost giving up. This is what he's talking about. Amen. This is David. And if you remember, and let me first pause for a while and we'll go back to this scripture. If you remember, let me give you some context. The man was anointed to be king at 17 years old. And the anointing came because of the price he had paid. I want you to follow me. While everyone else was going on and doing many other things because they were already uh, in the army and they had experienced all these other things, they were fighting the Philistines, all his brothers were concerned. He's the only one that used to rear sheep and he used to go to the wilderness and rear sheep and go back home. He was the only one that was a messenger at home. He was the only one that was a servant in his own home. So he had paid a certain price. I hope you know that the anointing does not come without a price. So he had paid the price by the time he was 17 for him to be anointed. And so many times we think that we have finished paying the price. We pay the price and then something happens in our lives and then we jubilate and dance and we think we have finished paying the price. So at the time when David was anointed, he was anointed to be king. Touch your neighbor said to be king. He was anointed to be king. And we know that at the time he was anointed, there was still another king. I want you to understand. So the Lord can call you today and say you're going to be the greatest prophet, prophet in the world. You're going to be God's number one prophet in the world. And there is still someone else standing there. It is not by mistake. The time when you get anointed, he's anointing you to step into the shoes of what he's preparing you for. But the first time that you get anointed, the first time that our, uh, Brother David was anointed, he was anointed to be king, but there was still a king in his shoes. He's supposed to get into the king's palace, but the palace still has a king. You are supposed to be the greatest billionaire, but those shoes, somebody is already standing in those shoes right now. I want you to understand what I'm saying. So God says you're going to be the biggest, the biggest businessman in the country. But as we speak, yes, you have received the anointing, but there is a man that is already standing in those shoes. Because we know that immediately he was anointed. That is when he actually killed Goliath. After he kills Goliath, Saul is looking for him. And it looks like Saul is looking for him to invite him into the palace, which looks like an open door. But the minute that he gets into the palace, Saul is looking for opportunities to kill him. I want you to follow this. I want you to follow this. Because for every man that God has called, for everyone that has been anointed, there is a process that will, you will go through that seems, looks like this process. And so many times we think that after we are anointed, we can jubilate and dance and sleep. No, it is the beginning. And now, when Saul wanted to kill David, I don't have the time to go through this. He wanted to kill David. David used to run away and Jonathan used to help him and say, my father is not there today. My father is coming this side. Please don't go this side. My father is looking for you this side. To the point that David went to a certain village and when he went to the village, he looked, he made himself a madman that the men of the village might not be able to notice that it is him. Touch your neighbor say he was still anointed. Mugabe who was still anointed. The villagers were seeing a madman. The madman they were seeing was still anointed to be king. So many times we, we, we take into account or we pause our lives we, we, we focus on what people are saying rather than what it is God is saying on our lives. And people say you cannot make it. But why don't you remember the one that anointed you? Because he anointed you to become something huge. He anointed you to be king. He anointed you to be prophet. It doesn't matter what everyone else is seeing. You know that there was an anointing that came upon you. That is what he's talking about. You focus on that. 
and you leave everything that is not what it is. And every time, every time that he went through all this trouble, to the point that he went and he just took himself into a cave because he had no other place to stay. He could not go back into his father's house. He could not go back into the palace. He could not be seen loitering all over the world or all over the village because they were looking to kill him. He was a fugitive now. Touch your neighbor said he was a fugitive because he was anointed. Oh God, I pray I have a man in this house. You leave this place and you go to another place. It looks like you're going through trouble. Touch your neighbor say, my only problem is that I'm anointed. My only problem is that anointing. And that the anointing of the Lord is upon my life. So when I go into a certain house, and the people in the house cannot stand my anointing, they will push me out. When they push me out, there is another door that God will open. It doesn't matter how many doors I go to, I will still remain anointed. Do you hear me? It doesn't matter what happens in your life. What is disturbing you? But a neighbor will tell us no one. Mugabe Chukutawanya, you are anointed. When you are anointed, when you are anointed, we have started a journey to separate you from what is human. The anointing does not come to people that are human. It comes to people so that they are prepared to be supernatural. So that they are prepared to be heavenly beings. So that they are prepared to be flames of fire. You cannot be anointed and remain a normal man. So you must go through a certain process. So that what it is you are anointed for can come forth as God. So when people are chasing you from their houses, when you step out of the house, instead of crying, you had better rejoice. Because what is disturbing you is the anointing of the Lord on your life. It's the call of God on your life. It's the fact that you are chosen. And you are chosen to be different, so you can't fit in. Nambila neighbor, if you don't fit into your family, it is because you are called to fit out. You are not supposed to be like your family. As a matter of fact, many of you here in the prophetic, this must be true for you. You are not like everyone else. Also, you, you are wondering why you are not like them. You are not supposed to fit because you are supposed to be different. The anointing separates you. So I want you to understand. And when David wrote this, he, was, he had gone through trouble. Touch your neighbor say, when he's anointed, Oh my God, so many people think that when the anointing comes upon them, it actually comes to give them a good life. Touch your neighbor, say it comes to give you a hard life. It comes to give you a painful life. Because there is a working going on on the inside of you to clean you, to cleanse you, to purge you, to prepare you, to train you so that you come forth as God. So when David wrote this, he was writing it depending on the circumstances that were in his life. He said, I had fainted. I would have despaired. I would have given up. But he says, unless I had believed. Read with me, one, two, three, go. Say, unless I had believed to see what? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He had believed. In other words, he's trying to tell you that your initial contact with God will look like everything is okay. Am I a witness? Until he starts to train you. He trains your hands for battle. He trains your fingers for war. And you're wondering why there is war after war, battle after battle. Touch your neighbor, say, get used to it. So, get used to it. Hallelujah, you are called as a soldier in this kingdom. You are not called to sit. You are called as a soldier. Soldiers are for battle. They are for war. And the Lord is only training you for the best. This is NIV. He says, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. First touch your neighbor say, are you believing to see the good? Have you, are you believing to see the goodness of the Lord? He's talking about his trying times. He's talking about the fact that the Lord is saying, you are going to see the goodness of my, my goodness in this land that you are in. But when you look on the outside, you see the opposite. You see the door open into the palace. The minute you enter the palace, the men in the palace want to kill you. 
I don't know if I am alone. You open the door to your work. And when you had just started work, the people that you find at work want to kill you. They start doing things against you. Touch your neighbor, say, don't run. Don't run. It's just training because the goodness of the Lord must find you in a certain place. And I want to teach you something. The Bible says, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. In other words, he is saying that there is prepared for me a certain portion of God's goodness. So if I have not yet seen it, I am going to see it. There must be an assurance in your heart. There must be a confidence in your heart that says, I might not have seen it in the night, but the minute that I wake up, I will see his goodness. If I don't see it in the morning, I should be telling myself that any second now, I will see it. Not so that you interest yourself. No. A deep, deep confidence in your heart saying, I am sure that I am going to see God's goodness in this season. Touch your neighbor, say, I'm sure. Mubuzi, say, are you sure? Now, let me show you. In that time, I don't have the time to actually explain all these details. The Bible says that when David went to the cave of Adullam, he was depressed. He was depressed. Because he had walked with God from when he was young. But he has seen God open doors and the doors seem to be closing themselves. He sees that God wants to lift him and he sees battle after battle. When he went into that cave, he was already depressed. But the Bible says that God motioned all men, all men that were broken, had broken, depressed and what? And they all went there. And the only thing that he would do is play his harp. And his harp would create an atmosphere for God to come. He, could, he couldn't do anything else but minister to God using that harp. I don't know if I came to speak to somebody. But there is a person here that God has sent me to. A person who is wondering why things keep looking like they are going to go this side. And then something keeps turning. And the Bible says, he said, I would have given up. I would have despaired. I would have left all these other things. I would have stopped believing. But I believed. I had this assurance on the inside of me. That God's goodness will come to me. Touch your neighbor. Say when I'm still alive. Say when I'm still alive. Now can I give you good news? God's goodness must find you in this month. It must find its way to you in this month. Ah, I want you to understand this. So our assurance today is not that we will see it while we are still alive. No, our assurance is that any day this December, any day this season, I must touch the goodness of the Lord. I don't know when. So I will keep myself believing. I will keep myself in confidence. I will keep myself assured that any second now, God is going to release his goodness to me. That is what he is trying to say. Touch your neighbor, say any time now. And let me show you, this is not something to inspire you or motivate you for a little while. Sometimes it looks like when we come here, oh, we are in some, oh, I don't know, it's, a, it's the atmosphere. We are somewhere on the roof. And then when you go home alone, touch your neighbor, say, are you still on the roof or you're on the floor? Amen. I don't want you to be here and be on top of the roof. You feel like everything is okay. And then when you go back to your house, you feel like now things are not okay. No, he's trying to say that every second of his life, he had to remind himself that I have not yet seen it, but I am going to see it. Any second of my life, I walk with an assurance that says, I've not touched this gold, but I'm about to touch this gold. I've not touched these dollars, but the dollars are going to come. I have this assurance already embedded on the inside of me. Touch your neighbor, say, it's coming. If you've not yet seen it, it is coming. I can assure you it is coming. And it is coming this month. This is David. But for us, we have this month 
to make sure that the season does not pass us by. And I have something I want to show you. If you look at what David is saying, he's talking about being steadfast in his faith. That today, I don't believe, and then tomorrow, I don't know what happened. Sometimes I can't even confess these things. I am never doubting God. There is never a time I'm doubting God. I don't even care what happens, and I don't care how it happens. I never doubt the goodness of the Lord. And it doesn't mean that the things that you experience, I don't experience. They are the same things. We are human. The Bible actually says that when you are going through a difficult time, don't think it is just you. Have you read the scripture? He says, don't think it is just you. Your other brethren around the world are facing the same issue. But how will it look like when you meet Noah who built an ark and without direction? Look at me. The man, it had never rained any day of his entire life or his forefathers' lives or his lives. It had never rained. There was no reason for rain. So rain had never come. So how can a man start telling you it is going to rain and it will not stop raining? And he's busy building an ark. Uh, how will you believe him? So if you are failing to believe God on a little matter, now what will happen when you encounter Noah and you will know that he built the entire ark over a hundred years until it was done and he entered the ark then what it is he said came to pass that is what God is talking to us about look at Abraham the Bible says Romans chapter 4 must be verse 18 19 and the Bible says he waited look the man waited he met God when he was about 75 years and he waited 25 years. First whisper to your neighbor, say, how long have you waited? Let me ask you. I am not your neighbor. The neighbor is there unless you're afraid of them. Hmm? How long have you waited? I need you to understand this. He says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him, whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead. The reason why we're talking about this is because his body was dead. And he says, and call it those things which be not as though they were. So we don't focus on the things that are not. We call the things that are not as though they are. You say, I have Range Rover. You have not understood me. Madam, if they ask you which car, if they ask you where you parked, my dear, you had better know where you parked. Even if you did not park there. Oh, I'm taking you somewhere. You have to know where you parked. Because God is calling us to believe the things. He says we call the things that are not as though they are so that they can be. That is the only way they can be. So I call myself a billionaire until all billionaires recognize that I am a billionaire. I call myself a royal until the royals cannot have party without me. You have not understood. Touch your neighbor say, I will be on the invitation list. You call yourself the thing because this is what scripture is teaching us. The Bible is talking about the times. The Bible says, Abraham, considered not. That word to consider means does not look at. Carefully consider. Don't look carefully. Mm. Oh, Jesus Christ. Huh? When you open wallet, don't start saying, mm, no, this one for lunch, this one for what. Just use the money. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Touch your neighbor, say, just use the money. I pray that I can get one person to just be mad for God this season. I know what I'm talking about. The money will come. You need to take the first step. Then the money is going to come. You need to take God at his word and say, I am not going to be careful. The Bible says about Abraham that he considered not he considered not 
That means he did not even think that he was a hundred years old. He stopped thinking that he was a hundred years old. And he saw himself as a teenager. Oh! He saw himself as a teenager. And he saw Sarah almost 90. Mm, as sweet 16. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said we are not old. He didn't think about it. So when things are saying no and God is saying yes, God is trying to redirect your attention to something else. He's saying don't think about the other. Do not consider it. Do not look at it. Don't look at your account. Let the account be looking for you. Don't look for the account. Keep checking it every other second. No. Just no money is there. That day you will with, go to withdraw the money. The money will be there. God, I pray I'm taking you somewhere. Touch your neighbor. Say, go and withdraw. Don't shake. Oh, Jesus Christ. I pray someone picks it. Whoever picks it shall receive the answer for it in the name of Jesus. There is a power there. A power. The Bible says, and not being weak in faith. Touch your neighbor, say, don't be weak in faith. Let me show you, faith, ngambira neighbor, faith does not come by the laying on of hands. Mugam. Hmm? It doesn't come by anointing you. No. It doesn't come by me laying the hands on you. No, it comes by what? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you are in doubt about what God is saying, what you need to do is go back, pick the, the CD, pick, pick the message, say, tell the media team, send the message to me. Replay it, replay it day and night, day and night. By the time you are done, the miracle will have arrived. It is hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Let me show you something. There is a power there that David is releasing, which is what I want us to talk about. He says, I would have fainted, but I believed unless I had believed. Now, when God opens a door for us, we must understand that we ought to do the things that are humanly possible. Look at me. There are things that are in your context to do. Touch your neighbor, say, bringing yourself to church is in your context to do. Tochi Savira. You are not, it is not for prayer. You don't fast and pray so that you go to church. It is in your ability to do. When God opens the season, he's trying to say, do what you can do humanly and give me a platform for me to do what you cannot do. He's saying, whatever I tell you to do, do it. And then give me a platform. Prepare a garden for me to release what it is I've said I will do. And you know, sometimes we want to, we fail at doing what we can do. And then we want God to do what he has to do. Touch on his neighbor, say, he will not. Mm -mm. Look at him like me and say, he will not. That's not how he works. That's not how he works. Let me show you something. The Bible says, in the book of Luke, you can find the scripture for me. The Bible says, he said, Jesus, when he was living, I want to show you a power, a power, a staying power. If you stay according to the word of the Lord this season, I guarantee you with everything I carry, you are going to see God's goodness in your life. I guarantee you. When Jesus was living, he said, to them. Luke chapter 24 verse 49 and he said and behold 49 please 24 and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of, the, of Jerusalem first touch your neighbor say tarry ye in icon Mokwate. I know what I'm talking about you had better tell them say tarry ye are we speaking a different language Mugambe Sigala one we are speaking KJV language. You might not understand me. He says, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Let me rephrase for you. He says, tarry ye in the 
in Icon Church until you taste and see that the Lord is good. There is an umbrella that he has released. And he says, as long as you are there, you will receive the answer. You will receive the goodness. When he said that thing to them, the Bible actually says that there were over 5,000 people. Over 5,000 people. And when we go to the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1, 2, the Bible speaks about those people. There were 120 The Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, same, the day. Now, let me help you understand. This day of Pentecost is not the 40th day. This day of Pentecost is when God says, today I have come for push. Oh, Jesus, I pray there is somebody. Today, he comes and he says, I have come for this man. I've come for Michelle. I've come for Laura. I've come for somebody. He will not tell you before. He will say, tarry in that place. But he says, every day, I will release something to a man. When he comes, when the time fully comes for you, he will release the goodness to you. Wow! I pray you are with me. The day of Pentecost, the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. He's not talking about count 40 days, 14 I don't even know. Some people go on a 40 day fast and they get the answer on the second day. Then they say, I am going to continue fasting. Gamba foolishness. Mudem. Say foolishness. If they had waited and they had waited for one day and, the, and then the Pentecost had come and they tongues and fire had come, what would they be doing there? The Pentecost is not about number of days. It is about a fullness in the spirit. When the fullness comes, the answer comes. That is why many times, especially about prophecy, I will get into the spirit and I will try to determine I will find a time because there is a specific time for a specific somebody. Oh, it might be the same season but there is a specific day for somebody I pray that it is your day today I pray it is your day today for the Lord to open doors for the Lord to shower you with overflowing goodness if it is yours you had better shout yes there is a time but God does not tell us the time so that he can use it to test us and that is the power that David banked on. Touch your neighbor, says staying power. Says staying power. The power to stay where God said you stay. And you stay on the word he said you should stay on until you get the answer. Until you get the answer. It doesn't mean there will not be things that will try to distract you. Will try to take you away. But you are saying God gave me his word. And I am going to do what is possible in my power. Until he does what is possible in his power. That is what we bank on. And the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord. Someone say in one place. In one place someone said i can church say in one place let me tell you i want to dig this thing deep 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 you understand it let me tell you if god said we be here amen and i'm speaking to you prophetically so help me god you understand this is how the prophetic works that's why many times i see a person and i say you know what come to me you know the person is busy i'd be like okay fine you've just missed the opportunity I don't use myself. When I say come, I am not even the one telling you to come. I can even call you when I don't know what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm just saying come. Because somehow I can tell in my spirit that God wants to speak to you. But he has not even told me what he wants to speak to you about. But when I see you, then he will tell me to tell you. You know, this is the opportunity I pray with all my heart that you can understand what I'm talking about. Because if you do prophetically, every opportunity that is presented for you, I swear to God, cannot go without a blessing. 
it cannot go without a blessing even if I just call you and I put my hand on you I called you I, I, I called you maybe you think this human thing called you this is just a box if you can see beyond the box and understand that God has called you and God places his hand on you it is enough he has already done something he has already accomplished something let me tell you when God tells you to do something I beg you with all my heart people look at me properly I cannot count to you how many invitations I have to travel or to even go and minister somewhere my assignment is to be here if you understand these little things God will work on everything that pertains unto you you just do what he has told you to do and then you allow him to do what he can do if we fail to do what it is we are told to do we will even we will not give him platform to do now funny thing is so many of us want God to do the other thing I'm going to speak apostolically. Quite a neighbor. You want to God to increase you. But you are not doing the thing that requires you to receive increase. Or that qualifies you to receive increase. Mm, I came to speak to somebody today. I like this silence. Don't clap. Please don't clap. We do not do the thing that we are required to do. I can't count the number of people that come. They receive a prophecy today. My dear, I know what I'm saying when I'm prophesying. I know it. And I swear to God, my word can never come to me void. It never. What kind of tree is planted? You plant it today. You plant a mango tree today. You come in the morning to water it. It is not there. And then it says, I died. The thing didn't come to pass. What, what, what do you expect? God is not a witch. He's not a magician. Things are not going to happen. That, that is not even supernatural. It is superficial. It is not supernatural. That thinking is not a supernatural thinking. The supernatural thinking says, I'm going to do everything he tells me to do. I'm going to be where he has told me to be. And I'm going to wait upon him. He will surely come to pass. He will bring the word to pass. If you don't, don't expect the other part. It is a funny thing. I was trying to tell you something yesterday. Elijah, Elijah told Elijah, this thing you've asked for me is very difficult. And he said, if. What a neighbor, Gamba. If. If. He said, if you see me, it shall be so. If you don't, it shall not be. So every season, look, I want to help you today, even if today is the only day I help you. Every season that God has brought us into this entire year has had instruction. It has had instruction. The number of people I look at and I'll be like, man, where were you? Tambu Zabigede if you have to go Tambu Zabigede. Run if you have to run. God will do the rest. You cannot stay at home and be like, oh, I don't have transport. You have feet. Touch your neighbor, say you have feet. I want you not to miss this season, seriously. Don't miss this season. Because I know what God wants to do. You must start whatever year you call that next year in another place altogether. You, the day you start it, you must start it when you are at the top. You are not starting it at the bottom. You must start it at the top. You must start it on a new level. If you are in a one confused house, one room confused house, at least you start it in one self-contained house. One room self-contained house. You must start at a better note. We cannot let this season go to waste. So what David was trying to talk about is the power to wait on the Lord. The power to stay in the place and be like, when he comes, he will find me where he said he should find me. And that is the power that God, the disciples, the Holy Spirit. He said they were in one accord, in one place. Touch your neighbor, say, if you had gone to Susu, you don't know what Susu is. 
I'm not your neighbor. You say, if you go to Susu, and that time comes, why do you come to the presence of the Lord, then start going to the bathroom? What is there in the bathroom? This is your time to be attentive. This is your time to hear from God. This is your time to say, any second now, God might call me, unless you don't know the kind of church you came to. There is no time. God does not say, when the service ends, now you start doing. No, he will come here, and the first thing you say, you come, you come, do this. That is what he wants to do. And now you are going to the bathroom. To do what? You squeeze the thing, keep the thing until the service ends. Stop doing these things. You are getting yourself out of the opportunity that God is presenting to you. There is a power to stay. I tell you, when you read that scripture, the man was impotent and he was there every day, the entire day, the entire night for 38 years now let me ask you when jesus came which is the fullness of time amen that was the fullness of time for him if he came and the man had gone to the bathroom tell me would god have healed him he cannot where does he find you? He must find you in the place where he said you should stay. Now in this season, where God has said there is manna for download every day. He said we take as much as we can eat. Ah, uh -huh. I don't know. I make this my other place. My, my schedule is here, there, here, there. I don't have another schedule for the season. Until God releases all his goodness to me. That is what he is talking about. There is a power there in you doing what it is God has said you do. In you stay. Sometimes the instructions they will give us, they look like kiddish instructions. What kind of instruction is read that psalm and read it 12 times in the midnight hour? He has a reason why it is 12. And my God shall release his overflowing goodness. This is the power David was talking about when he said that I had believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Touch your neighbor say, you will drive the cars in this land of the living. Say in this season, I need somebody to prophesy properly. Say I will drive in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone say I will sleep like a king. I will travel somebody decree I will travel in this season in the name of Jesus someone say I will increase I will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ may it be so for you in Jesus name this is the power God is talking about there is a staying power when God says stay here do this please by all means that's what you should do. There is that scripture, that little scripture, the Bible, the parable that Jesus gives about the woman who had gone to the judge. And so many people, so many times I've spoken about this, so many people think that it is about praying. Because the Bible says that the, the lady goes to the judge and goes back to the judge and goes back to the judge almost every day. Until the judge is like, oh, you will wear me out. Let me give vindicate you. But then there's a little scripture there. The Bible says, when the son of man comes, will he find faith? Someone say faith. Will he find? Will he find you believing? Now to find you in faith is not to say I believe the thing to happen. No. To find you in faith is to find you doing what it is he said you should do. Because faith is, faith is the verb. Faith is the verb. The believing part is the action. The faith must have action. Faith without works is, it is dead. So you don't say, I believe. Touch your neighbor, say, do you believe while you're sleeping? You are not even awake. You are not even there. So even when you're sleeping, you have no idea what is happening. But he's trying to help us understand that when he comes, will he find you 
doing the thing that he said you should do. So we don't get tired. We don't despair. Like David is saying, there must be a power working on the inside of us that says, oh my God, today you gave me a hundred thousand. I am still believing you for millions of money. I'm still believing you for billions. I'm still believing you for increase. That is the only way that you get into the next level. Every opportunity that you have to do what it is he has told you is an open door for him to do what you cannot do. If you cannot do miracles in your life, you cannot perform wonders in your life, touch your neighbor say you can come to church. You can come to church and you can do what it is they said you do. It's a simple thing. You do your part and then God does his part. We give him platform every day. This is the power he's talking about. When, that, when Jesus reached that man at the pool, he didn't look for him. And he was not the only one there. That means the fullness of his time had come. I pray you are available when your fullness of time comes. I pray you are here and we don't look for you when God says your name. When God calls out your name. That is the power in waiting until God opens up the season for you. I pray that somebody's time is today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the fullness of your time arrives today without fail. In the name of Jesus Christ, and may the overflowing goodness of the Lord come upon you and rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody celebrate Jesus.